Judy, what are you doing? William, I'm looking for a plant sale that's fun for everyone, has great plants, and maybe a few giveaways wouldn't be bad. What about Subaru Garden Days? Ah, you're so smart. We'll tell you all about it next, right here on Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time and to Subaru Garden Days. We're at Capital Subaru on the Parkway in Salem. Now last year we had this wonderful event. This is the second year it's happening. And just like last year, you can come out and pick up a free tray pack of annuals. You can also pick up a free uh, pack of seeds. And every half hour, we are drawing a name for a free giveaway of a Portland Nursery gift card. Now remember to come hungry because there'll be free hot dogs and free sodas from 11 to 3 all day today. It certainly isn't too late to get even more plants into your garden. We have a great selection of vendors out here at Subaru Garden Days, so you can do just that. And speaking of plants, we'll be showing you some heat-loving plants. But first, four simple trellises. You know, we wanted to give you some simple ideas and tips on making trellises because so many things in a garden, mm -hmm. vine, and whether you're talking about vegetables or some, you know, just some beautiful oh, wow. flowering sure. stuff, you really want to make some nice uh, trellises. So here we have an idea with bamboo. Right, you know, I just found these in my shed, and so I just took them together and I found it a huge twist tie and just gathered them at the top and I'll just drive them into the ground for some more support. I can use this for peas or beans or even ornamental vines for the summertime. And it's really very simple to do. You just get you three go. things, and it doesn't have to be bamboo. You can use pieces of iron, you can use small pieces of wood, anything sure. that you might have laying around. You just take some stretch tape, and you tie them up. And then all you do is just spread them out, and it's just that simple. That is good. Well, you know, we all have tomato cages. This is a great square one. You don't have to just use them for tomatoes. We've used these for peas, and what's a great idea is to plant the peas on the inside, and then they'll wind their way up. You don't plant the peas on the outside because if you need to hoe around it or weed around it, you can actually mm -hmm. take the plants out. So this way, the plants are protected on the inside of the trellis. Here's another great idea that's very cost effective for the garden. It's just trellises made with PVC. You get some PVC, you get some uh, T connectors and some corners. The great thing about this idea is you can cut them to any height you want, any width you want, and look at that, they still move. So in the winter time, if you're not using them, just fold Perfect. them up, put them in the, the garage or in your shed, and then you string them with just some simple string or twine or even hemp and it works great. And you can make different sizes, Judy. Yeah, look at this one. It's just a shorter version of yours. It's just for some cucumbers that aren't going to get as tall as the beans. Mm -hmm. So it's really effective that way. Now we've got one more thing mm -hmm. we want to show you. Let's go to another place in the garden. William, this is a great idea if you have an existing fence. These are fence posts that are already in for this really long fence trellis system. And all we did was put some eye hooks in here and they're stainless or they're galvanized so they're not going to rust. And you know, all we did here was use some fishing wire. Now some people don't want to use fishing wire because they say it doesn't biodegrade. That's fine. You can still use twine or string or hemp again just to string it up and then it gives your vines a really great place to grow. You know, everybody is looking to add some verticality into their garden. These are four simple ways to make trellises to make your garden more beautiful. I'm at Little Baja in Burnside with Jared. And Jared, you know, it is summertime, but it's cool in our evenings. And you have these great chimeneas mm -hmm. to take out that chill. Yeah, these are a great excuse to stay out in the evenings when it starts cooling off. Keep your friends and family together a little longer. Uh, and there are some tips to really make it work efficient for us. Sure. I think the most important is to let it start up nice and slow. Mm. Start with just kindling a newspaper till you take the chill out of the clay. And once you've done that, it's not cold to the touch anymore, you can add your bigger pieces of wood. Ah, and what I like about this is that the smoke goes up. It's not like a, a fire pit where the smoke goes everywhere. Exactly. You get that draw. We have a wide opening and a wide stack, so it takes everything up and out of the picture. And you know, you have this kind of raised up, so that's a really great idea too. You don't have to have it flush on the patio. Yeah, sure. A lot of folks do like to raise it up off the floor, bring it up to the seating level. Um, I used a wood pedestal I built at home. You could use cinder blocks, anything just kind of Elevate it up a little. Ah. And you know, I noticed that um, it's, not a, it's not a huge fire, but it's really giving off a lot of heat here. Yeah, it really projects a lot of that heat right out the front. Um, we use these caps on here. Once it gets going, this slows down that draw. 
So ah. it'll, it'll plume some more of that heat right out the front instead of going all up and out. Uh, and do we have to clean it out very often or does the ash need um, to get cleaned? You know, we burn in ours every day here, so we clean ours every couple weeks. But you'll kind of figure out your own schedule. It's real easy. You just get in there with a piece of cardboard, scoop the ashes right into your compost. Ah. And you know, I noticed that you don't just have the clay chimeneas, you have some metal ones too that are very unique. Yeah, we do. And so are there any benefits between the metal or the clay? Well, there's pros and cons to both. The clay, you need to let it warm up gradually. You don't have that with the metal chimneas. Um, however, the metal can get really hot. So if you have children or grandchildren around, you wouldn't want them to bump into it. They could get scolded. And Jared, I saw another unique fire pit here. What is it made out of? Well, it's made out of metal. It's a recycled <laughs> washing machine. <laughs> It is really cool. So with all the different styles that you have here, what kind of wood do we need? Well, with the clay chimneys, it's a little more important to use harder woods, um, something that's not going to pop and burst and have a good coal base. Uh -huh. And with the metal chimneys, you don't really need to worry about that. You can just stock them up and they're good to go. Uh, well, for all of your summer entertaining, you have to come down to Little Baja, talk to Jared and the other staff here, and really have a fire pit or a chimney on your patio for you and your friends all summertime. Well, thanks so much. Thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah with Portland Nursery, and I'd like to invite you to check out our website where you'll find valuable gardening information that you know is local to our area. Check out our gardening solutions page where you'll find over 100 helpful brochures, or sign up for our email newsletter to receive timely gardening advice, inventory updates, and upcoming classes and events. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. On 50th and Stark, 90th and Division. Now's the time. Standard TV and Appliance Memorial Day savings going on now. Huge price cuts on top brand appliances, mattresses, and HDTVs. Save big on a Whirlpool high efficiency washer, only $3.98. Get in a Mana stainless steel bottom mount, only $8.99. Huge savings on a stainless steel Bosch dishwasher, only $5.39. Plus, get a Beautyrest Queen mattress for $3.78. Hurry, Memorial Day savings won't last long. Standard TV and Appliance. Since 1926, the Bonite Company has worked with homeowners to make their homes and gardens beautiful. If you have a garden problem, Bonite has the answer. Repels All from Bonite works three ways through touch, taste, and smell with all natural ingredients so you can enjoy the garden you dreamed of without unwanted visitors. Visit Bonite.com to find a local retailer and to download your free Bonite Problem Solver app for your iPhone or Droid. At French Prairie Perennials, we take pride in being different. From our rare, unique, and unusual plant material and handcrafted garden art to our visualscaping program, we can help you create an outdoor living space as unique as you are. Our gift shop has home and garden decor and gifts for all occasions. Visit our store in the heart of Oregon wine country, French Prairie Perennials, Dundee, Oregon. Outdoor living elevated. I am at Rita Lee's Nursery. I'm here with Heather and they grow cactus and succulents. And so what I want to do is, first of all, let's, let's, you have a beautiful display right out here, but let's start with the cactus, which I think a lot of times we get intimidated with cactus because we buy them as a house plant often, put them in the house and then they die. But that tends to be overwatering. So first of all, tell me, what is the culture of these? How should people, if they buy them, take care of them? Well, this is a desert species. Uh, they like to be dried out uh, very well before you would water them. Um, and then fertilizer, they like to be fertilized once a month with just like a general um, Schultz yeah. uh, fertilizer mix. Just a general purpose just fertilizer. Just a general. Um, I think they make a cacti uh -huh. uh, fertilizer. Yeah. Um, that's, you know, what I would suggest for the average homeowner to use. Okay. Because they're really, I you know, it's a, it's a, thing that a lot of people do with houseplants is overwater anyway so you really have to be aware of the yes. cactus. Yes, when it, if you're if you don't think it needs water then I probably would suggest not watering Just it. Just waiting any yeah. <laughs> waiting maybe waiting another few days and then maybe give it some water. Okay. Now, you had said these were desert cactus. I am assuming then that there's different groupings of yes. those kind of plants. Uh, are these in a different group then? This is a euphorbia group right okay. here. 
Um, and they grow all over from the desert to the mountains. Wow. They like to be um, have sun or, or full sun. So partial sun or, sun or full sun. <laughs> sun <yeah>. or part <laughs> sun. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they like to um, have a moist, well-drained soil. Really? Mm -hmm. They can also tolerate cold just depending upon their species. Yeah. Well, and I'm assuming that when you say moist, it really does depend on the drainage. You can't, yes. It doesn't want to set in moisture, but no. it wants it to go through they, it. They don't like to have their roots totally um, dry, but they like to be well-drained. Which, oddly enough to me, it always kind of freaks me out. Euphorbias, poinsettias are part of the euphorbia family. That's so weird to me yes. that the, they're so different. And I love, you've got to tell me a little bit about these in the front. Those are adorable. Well, those are called lithops. They're also known as living stone. And they like uh, little water. They like a sandy, gritty soil. Uh, they don't like to be touched and disturbed a lot once they get into their pot. Very cool, very cool plants. Now, you know, succulents and cactus, I think a lot of people get confused on those, but these, a lot of people instantly know these. Oh, we know that plant, we know that plant. But there's a whole group here. Let's talk about these a little bit and about the culture of them. Uh, that is called the um, chrysulas. They're also known as the jade plant. Uh, they were grown, they commonly come from South Africa and they can survive almost anywhere. They're a very easy plant to yeah. take care of. And they're really beautiful. I love, I love the cactus and succulents. A lot of them have such cool structure, so that's really wonderful. But I, I would be remiss if we don't talk about these beautiful flowers down here. What are those from? Those are the rainforest cactuses. Wow. They are also known as, um, if anybody's had a Christmas cactus. Oh, they're all the same group. Uh, Christmas cactus, cactus and your orchid cactuses um, are also And it's funny, Heather, because I've never heard them called, I've, I've heard them called orchid cactuses a lot, but I've never heard them called rainforest. In my mind, that means water. <laughs> yes, uh, neither have I. I just learned that today, so, <laughs> or last night, I yeah. guess. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, they like a moist, you know, a well-draining soil, though, again, but they don't like to totally dry all the way out like yeah. your desert cactuses yeah. do. And so that, that just proves the point that even in this family of plants, you know, some you have to be really aware. You just have to be aware of watering and what you're yes, doing. Yes, and that would be probably your number one enemy yeah. would be your watering. Okay. Uh, fertilizer, you know, they like just a general all-purpose cactus fertilizer uh, once a month and... And clearly, a, m most of them have to like sun, so a good southern window if you're going to have them inside or something like that? Yes, some of them you do have to be careful about whether they do sunburn if they're in a direct window. Some yeah. of them can actually sunburn from wow. being too, too hot, Perfect. but the, most all of them like bright light. So now what about temperature? Uh, well, most of our cactuses uh, like warm weather. Sure. Uh, we don't let them get down to 50. Uh, below 55. Okay. All the greenhouses are heated, so when it gets 55, the heat does come on. Um, they don't like to be frostbitten. Uh, they would prefer warmer days and cooler nights, like in the 50s. Okay. Well, you know, I, I, I love being out here. There's, there's just greenhouses of wonderful things. Uh, you can go to gardentime.tv. We can click you over to their Facebook page, or you can go to Al's. They sell these wonderful cactuses uh, at the Sherwood store. So thank you so much, Heather. This has really been fascinating. Thank you. It was fun. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru. Your way on the parkway. They had to take the car, they had to get it open with the jaws of life, take me out on a backboard, took me to a Trauma One Center. I absolutely feel like the Subaru saved my life. Well, we, we trust Capital. We trust our salesperson here, Jackie. Jackie's great. I believe that she really cares about us. She teaches me about the Subaru. Our, our way, way on, on the, the parkway. parkway. Subaru Garden Days returns to Capital Subaru in Salem. Join us for a day of food, fun, and garden excitement. Select garden vendors join William and Judy on the parkway from 11 to 3. That's Subaru Garden Days, May 16th at Capital Subaru. Your way on the parkway. Over the 30 years that our family has been in the nursery industry, we've learned that anyone can supply a customer with plants and garden supplies. But it's supplying those plants and supplies backed by a knowledgeable staff that can transform a garden and take it from ordinary to extraordinary. That's what we do at Sagawa Nursery. 
Why be ordinary when you can be extraordinary? Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. Look at your home. Winter left behind grungy stained decks, walks, siding and lawn furniture. You know they look awful. Clean them all today with the original and still the best 30 Seconds Outdoor Cleaner. Since 1977, 30 Seconds has delivered clean when you want it clean. Easy to use, spray it on, wait, then hose away winter dirt, grime and stains from algae and mold. From our family to yours, thank you for buying 30 Seconds Outdoor Cleaner. Find it at leading home stores and garden centers. Color, color, color. When you think of your garden, think of color. Then think of Margie's Farm and Garden. High quality plants and great customer service are our trademark. We make sure you're happy with every purchase. Whether you're a first time gardener or a seasoned professional, we'll help you be successful every time you step into your garden. Vegetables or herbs, hanging baskets or perennials, trust Margie's Farm and Garden. Just off I-5 near Aurora. We are talking about vertical gardening today at Farmington Gardens, and I'm with Mary. And Mary, so why do we want to have vines? Why do we want to have these things going up walls and so on? Oftentimes today, gardens are a little smaller, Judy, mm -hmm. and so um, the gardener doesn't have a lot of room for a lot of beautiful plants. So if you can sneak in a few vertical <laughs> plants, that'll really put a nice touch in your garden, and it won't take up a big footprint. Ah, excellent. Anyway, we have lots to talk about, so what is this beautiful one? This is a climbing hydrangea, hydrangea petalorus, and the variety is Miranda. Beautiful. It's a beautiful variegated vine. This particular vine has white flowers. Um, they open up a little bit chartreuse, but then they do turn a creamy white. I think this has great um, attraction even in the winter time. It is deciduous, but I keep my blossoms on and I let them skeletonize. Ooh. So between the skeletonized blossoms and the peeling bark, it is very appealing ah. in the winter time. An afternoon shade for that one. That's exactly right, yes. And then this one is a cousin. It is, it's a schizophragma. And um, this one is called Moonlight, and it's a real pretty one. Um, and I think this one is great for the foliage. It doesn't get quite as large, um, but it definitely is a nice accent for the shade, and it is deciduous. And what's this gold leafed one? This is hops. Ah. This is where beer <laughs> comes from. And this is the aureus, the golden hop. But I wanted to throw this in there because this just has great Beautiful. dimension on the crinkly leaves and you can get 30 feet off of this wow. in a summer. So it's a lot of fun and people use this a lot over arbors nice. to provide some shade. Nice. Yeah. And you can't forget clematis, all these different colors. Beautiful, beautiful clematis selection. Um, they are hardy in our zone of course so they will last through the winter they are deciduous there's a couple things about clematises i would like to point out when you plant them in your garden you should drop them about two inches deeper drop oh, interesting. the interesting drop the crown into the soil and we don't do that really with hardly any other plants right, right. so you want to do that and then the other thing it's kind of an old-fashioned saying head in the sun feet in the shade you want to keep the soil moist and cool and you can um, provide protection with other plants head in the sun and you can have bloom all summer Oh, that's great. And then there's the evergreen clematis. There is an evergreen clematis, um, cl clematis, clematis. <laughs> armandii, and this is snowdrift, so it would be evergreen. It blooms more than once, usually early spring, and then you'll get a flush of bloom in the fall, and then of course it is evergreen. Ah, nice. And then touch on this one because the flowers are so unusual. This is an akebia, and there are several varieties of akebia. Um, they flower in a cream color, they flower in a deep maroon color, and they flower in shades in between, followed by berries that are edible to us and edible to the birds, of course, and they give a very nice scent. And I would call them on the vigorous side. They can be semi-deciduous here. You may or may not lose your leaves, but the plant will survive. Nice. And then honeysuckle. Every garden, oh. I think, should have honeysuckle for that fragrance. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is a very common variety, Hall's honeysuckle. It's a yellow floral um, honeysuckle. This has a lot of growth. It's quite vigorous. It is deciduous. It loves to be in the full sun. And the way I see this used best is over an arbor nice. or over a pergola, and the scent is wonderful. Comes in yellow, comes in a dark orange. It's a hummingbird magnet. It's a long tubular flower. Nice if you pair it up with a campsis, which is a trumpet vine. And this, I really like the foliage. Pretty it's foliage. more of a cut leaf um, foliage. These yellow and orange mixed together with this, with the honeysuckle yellow and orange look awesome together. Oh, that is a nice combination. 
Um, here we have That's beautiful. yes, a silver creeper vine. And this is um, a relative of the Virginia creeper that you might be a little bit more familiar with. It is our answer to not using Boston ivy <laughs> everywhere. Oh, okay. yes. So this is great to cover the side of a building. It'll make the little rootlets that will stick to the wood. Um, it's a beautiful bronze color. In the fall, it turns a deeper bronze to a maroon. Pretty. It is deciduous, comes back with a vengeance each year. Ah. <laughs> and this has a beautiful variegation. This is a porcelain vine, and I would have to say this is probably my favorite vine. <laughs> it's Emilopsis. This has tricolored leaves. Um, followed by small white flowers that are fragrant and then in the fall you have a metallic blue berry that the birds really like. I found that this grows best in morning or evening sun with a little afternoon shade. Wow. But it is a good grower. Very, very interesting. fast grower. And you have a really nice selection of tropical vines too that are cool for decks. We do. We have got some bougainvillea and some mandevillea. These are zone 10 and 11 plants, and so we just sell these as annuals. But we have a lot of tropical transplants, either people from Mexico <laughs> sure. or from California who want a bit of home. So these work out very nicely, and they put on a great amount of growth each year. Keep them well fertilized in the full sun, and they'll do fine. Yeah, they're beautiful. Yeah. And then we have some bigger plants here. What are these? So this is another honeysuckle that I brought out. Um, it's uh, peaches and cream. This is a very beautiful one, peach color with some cream color in the blossom. It's a very prolific grower. This too is semi-deciduous. You may or may not lose your leaves. It'll definitely live through the winter and it's got great fragrance. Oh, talk about fragrance. Yeah, star jasmine. And this is um, quite popular. Many people grow this. This is an evergreen here. However, some years it can defoliate because of our Nicole, temperatures, sure. um, but it will come back. The thing that it succumbs to is usually too wet of feet. Oh. So it's really good to mound up the roots of it a little bit and easily you'll have it seven to 10 years, maybe even longer. Wow, and then this wisteria oh, is tremendous. I had to pull out the wisterias. <laughs> they are just gorgeous. Um, these are, if I said prolific grower before, then this is a <laughs> prolific grower with vigorousness. Yes. Um, these grow like crazy. You need a very, very strong type trellis or a arbor to put these on. Um, these can grow feet per year. If you trim the pods, they develop seed pods mm -hmm. after the flower. If you trim those pods, you can often force another bloom. And this small one, uh, which is a new variety to us, Blue Moon Kentucky Wisteria, this is touted to be a repeat bloomer all summer happens to have little blossoms that kind of remind me of um, sweet peas. Sweet peas, yeah. yeah. Well, wow, we just talked about so many vines. Really, every garden should have some kind of vine, your porch, your deck, or out in your garden on arbors or obelisks. Mary, you had so many great ones. Please come out and see her. The health and beauty of your garden starts from the ground up, and healthy soils begin at Grimm's Fuel. For the best in garden mulch, blended soils, and bark dust, choose Grimm's. U-Haul delivered or installed, Grimm's can do it. And if you're looking for a new lawn, Grimm's can do that too with our special lawn installation service. Grimm's is also the area's largest recycler of yard debris. The foundation for a healthy garden begins at Grimm's Fuel. Locally grown, fresh from the farm, stylish and sustainable, your dream yard starts at Owl's Garden Center. Bring home the hues of summer with our gorgeous hanging baskets, grown locally on our farm. Choose from sun or shade combinations to instantly brighten up your home. Right now, 12-inch hanging baskets are on sale. Buy two, get one free. Hanging baskets for a pop of color that brightens your home all season long. Owl's Garden Centers in Woodburn, Sherwood and Gresham. Add a treasure to your home or garden. At Grand Valley Ornamental Iron, we have the largest selection of ornamental iron pieces in the area. Our structures can add to the beauty of your home or garden. Spring is here, and we have a huge overstock of arbors, trellises, and obelisks. Right now, they're all 20% off. Bring us your ideas, and we can make them a reality. Grand Valley Ornamental Iron, between Aurora and Hubbard on Highway 99. Since 1982, The Wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, The Wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete. 
natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. I am at the exotic Villa Catalana and Rare Plant Research with Burl. And Burl, it's a beautiful day. And so we're going to talk about today um, some tender succulents to put in with our hardy plants. Yes. Um, you know, we discovered, my wife and I discovered a number of years ago, if you have an essentially hardy landscape, but little areas where you can put tender succulents, it really... Uh, puts a little pizzazz in the garden, a little bit more spark that you normally wouldn't have. Kind of like put, putting petunias in a regular garden, yeah. but this is just a little different. Yeah. Uh, what do you have? Well, we, we, I can show you this. This is actually hardy. This is Daisy, Lon, Daisy Leary on Wheeleri, and that's actually hardy to about 15 uh, degrees below zero, so it's pretty tough. And then there's barberry here, and there is a, um, a hardy yucca, yucca here, rostrata. Mm -hmm. But in between, we've planted some echeveria, Beautiful. one called afterglow. Like little rosettes, they're the, gorgeous. And they will get like um, 16, 18 inches in diameter. In just one season. In one season, uh-huh. Wow, and then just a regular sedum, sedum capo blanco, yep. very beautiful. It just, and they just, um, they just pick it up just a little bit. Now here's another plant that we just discovered a couple of years ago. This is Aeonium, cool. one called Silk. Wow. And it has a kind of a little silky patina to it that mm -hmm. we, we kind of like. And right next to it is Senecio vitalis. Now, none of those are hardy, and so uh, in the wintertime, or actually usually it's about November, we, um, we cut them off and reroot them. Oh, A person perfect. can overwinter some of them in their house, mm -hmm. or um, they can also just let them, treat them like annual, annuals and let them die. And then what kind of culture, what kind of area do I need to put these in? Well, um, if it's just for the summer, the drainage isn't quite so critical, but if you're going to actually have them in a container, then they would need to be very well-drained soil, like a cactus mix with lots of pumice or uh, perlite in it. Um, here, this bed is actually about half pumice and half perlite, and it actually drains too well oh. uh, because it's actually about three feet deep. You can't tell that from here. This is actually on a retaining wall here on the other side. Um, what are these plants that kind of look like uh, little pancakes or something Yes, over there? that's a really cool plant from South Africa. That is... Um, um, one called flapjacks is the common name, oh, okay. but it's um, Calancho. Calancho thrysiflora. Very um, cool. And actually right next to another South African plant, this is um, uh, cotyledon orbiculata. Very and that has been hardy for us most years. There are some cotyledons that grow really high in the Drakensberg Mountains, oh, and yeah. that is one that grows up um, uh, well, at about 8,000 feet. Ah, very high. So it's pretty tough. And I see some more aeoniums, and what's that one? Oh, yes, this, I'm really pleased with this one. This one is called Moonglow. Wow. And I first got it about three years ago. Wholesale price was $35 Ooh. for a small plant. You could get a few of them on the internet for $100 a piece. Well, the price has come down. They're still a little nice. expensive. <laughs> but the rosettes will get 18 to 20 inches in diameter. Wow, those and are big. Just real, and really nice dark uh, purple color. Actually, right next to it, too, is... Um, a really cool uh, aloe, aloe dorothea, that if it takes, it takes full sun and it turns this translucent orange. Wow. So it's just really, really cool. And that's what's in that other container you saw, yes, we saw too. Yes, the containers are, another way you can use uh, non-hardy succulents are in containers. And you can just fill them out and have all succulents. Mm. You can mix and match. We do some with mixed with grasses. There's all kinds of things that you can do that are just absolutely incredible. Right, and to get those plants, you have them for sale here, oh, yes. Plant Research, yes. and during special events? Yes, we have actually a number of events here. We have our annual open nursery. Uh, we have wine tasting in our winery every Saturday afternoon. Um, we have uh, gourmet dinners, monthly gourmet dinners uh -huh. now, and a couple of garden parties, so there's actually a lot going on. Uh, so you can go to Gardentime.tv and go over to your website, find out all those special events, and just come out and just really soak up this atmosphere and all the beautiful plants. Well, this has been wonderful. Yeah, it has. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's great having you. Thanks. Well, if you need a fix of color and fragrance, you have to come out to Heirloom Roses in St. Paul. I'm with Ben, and Ben, you know, it's just so much fun to come out here, but you have a little twist on roses this year. Sure, we're doing hanging basket roses, <laughs> and uh, we have these beautiful hanging baskets, and the, the great thing about these is you get years of blooms out of them, sure. either in the hanging baskets or once they're, they're played out, you can put them into the ground and enjoy them the second year in the ground. 
anything really difficult about them or pretty easy? You know, it's really very straightforward. It's just like planting a normal hanging basket. The key is selecting the right rows that will do well in a hanging basket that okay. will cascade out and give you flowers all summer long. Oh, okay, and so we actually are going to do one as a demonstration. So what is this rose? So this is Carpet of Color. It's a ground cover rose and it Left alone, it will get to be pretty good size, but when you put it in a hanging basket that first year, what you're going to get is a full hanging basket with roses cascading over the side. Nice. And what I really like about this is the blooms. You get an orange, yellow to pink bloom, and it all kind of changes throughout the bloom process. Ah, okay. And so we have three, so it's about a 10-inch basket, 12-inch basket, yeah. and so three for that? Yeah, and we tell people a 12-inch basket's kind of the minimum on this because you're putting a pretty good size plant in there. And so, yeah, we have three, three plants here, and all they'll right. just get placed right inside. Okay. And we're using black gold soil. Um, really good to use a potting soil, not a garden soil, correct, right? Correct, correct. There you go. I'll give you that one. And then what about other care? What kind of sun and watering? Yeah, so you want good, healthy sun on these. Morning sun uh, with some afternoon shade is fine. You don't want to keep these in a shaded patio area. They do need to get sun just like a typical rose would. And watering is the most critical thing on these roses. You know, they do need good water. Watch for them to wilt and then water them accordingly. All right. And so you are angling them out, so that just kind of helps them cascade a little mm -hmm, bit more. Mm -hmm. And if you'll notice on some of these baskets around you, you'll see a shoot that's shooting straight up. They'll do that until they get blooms and then they'll cascade over. So okay. don't be worried if you get a, a wild rose shooting straight <laughs> okay. up. They'll, they'll trail over eventually. All right, and we're just going to add some more black Yeah, yeah. So one of the things we're doing here at the nursery is we know that you know people can do this at home, but if you want to come out and make an event of this, we have black old soil here in the pots, and if you buy your roses for hanging baskets, we're happy to pot them up while, while you wait. Ah, well that's nice. Make the mess here at your place. Sure, sure. <laughs> and then uh, also, what about fertilizing? Yeah, so in these pots with these young plants, we tell people to use a water-soluble fertilizer. At the nursery here, we use uh, an organic fish fertilizer, okay. but really any type of water-soluble fertilizer is great. Ah. And really, now we're finished, we just have to hang it up and wait for it to fill in. That's right. Ah, yeah. That's pretty easy. Very simple. <laughs> and you know, we've walked around the grounds and it's just always beautiful. So can we bring our lunches out and just enjoy the gardens? You know, the gardens are open from dawn to dusk and we have lots of places for picnics. Plan to spend time. It's a, it's a beautiful place. <laughs> yeah. You know, it is a nice time to come out for the weekend and weekday or weekend with your family and friends and really stroll around the gardens and talk to the staff. If you have any other questions about your roses at home or you want to take some home, really knowledgeable staff. You know, Ben, this is just a great time to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Every year about this time, you'll see a lot of conifers starting their new growth. Now, this new growth is called candling. And, you know, we also get a lot of questions at garden time about how do I prune my conifers? Well, here's one of the easiest ways. If when you see these candles start growing, you just go in and easily pull them off. They're really simple to pull off. Then that will keep the plant at its current height. Now this works great in uh, not only in the garden, but also if you have conifers in containers that you want to really slow down their growth rate. So uh, remember, if you're out looking to prune your conifers, candling, that's our garden tip of the week. Spring is here, and May is the time to bring spectacular colors and fragrance to your garden. Farmington Gardens can help you succeed in any corner of your garden. From hanging baskets, container gardens, veggie starts, water features, or something truly unique from our gift shop, Farmington Gardens brings May colors to life. Open every day, just a short drive out Farmington Road. Farmington Gardens, we're growing for you. Cultivate your desire to learn. Give your learning deeper roots with Garden University at the Oregon Garden. Join us for a variety of lectures, demonstrations, and workshops hosted by experts in the field. Learn how to become a certified first detector. Identify and help prevent the spread of dangerous pests and pathogens with the Sentinel Plant Network. Help your garden and your mind grow through Garden University at the Oregon Garden. Contact the Oregon Garden for more information or visit OregonGarden.org. Subaru Garden Days returns to Capital Subaru in Salem. Join us for a day of food, fun, and garden excitement. Select garden vendors join William and Judy on the parkway from 11 to 3. That's Subaru Garden Days, May 16th at Capital Subaru. Your way on the parkway. At Garland Nursery, you'll find... Top quality plants. Four generations of garden know-how. 
fun and fantastic garden decor. And the best in garden supplies. Come visit us at Garland Nursery. Since 1937, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. The irises are blooming. The Shriners Iris Display Gardens are now open and free to the public. Surround yourself with a rainbow of color of over 500 irises. Or take a stroll in our 10-acre display garden. Smell the fragrance as you see iris paired with other beautiful blooming plants. Check out our cut flower display and pick up something for that iris lover in our gift shop. Take home a cut flower bouquet or order some for your own garden. We are easy to find. Take the Brooks exit off I-5 and follow the signs. So I am here at Bee Thinking. It's a great store about all about bees, really, and I'm here with Matt, the owner. So my first question to you, Matt, is what, what, what made this happen in your mind? What ha occurred that going, eh, I'm going to do bees? It was a bee. Was it indeed? <laughs> Seven years ago, uh, a bee flew into our kitchen, and my wife asked me to rescue her. And so I fed this bee some honey, and she drank and gained energy. I took her to the front porch, and she flew away. And then later on, dozens of bees that look just like these ones uh -huh. uh, were flying into my screen door. Really? Trying to get in. So wh why? How, why would they do that? I mean, what was that logic? So they're, they're amazing and they communicate. And so the bee that I rescued told her friends about this honey and then they all joined in. And so that's So they went to the place where the honey was. That's fascinating. Exactly. And so from that one little thing that happened, you decided this is something you want to do. So what was the process? How did you come up with the idea of, of creating hives and the stuff like that? Yeah, it was, it was really organic. I, I bought one beehive, uh -huh. a more standard beehive, and put it in my parents' backyard. And then I started researching and reading everything I could about bees, because mm -hmm. I'm the guy that, uh, you know, I really obsess about things. So <laughs> I, I bought every book I could find, I read every website, watched YouTube videos, and then I, I learned that there were other options, there were other hive designs. And by, by different hive designs, in my mind, when I think of a beehive, I think of the ubiquitous white box that you see all, you know, you can stack them up, they're all over fields, out in countries, and in city homes now. So tell me about some of the other designs that you're talking about. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of designs. Beekeepers are historically tinkers. They're mm -hmm. always inventing the newest, coolest design. Uh, but there are really two others that are, are pretty popular compared to what's called the Langstroth hive uh -huh. here in the United States. Uh, so the Top Bar Hive and the Warry Hive are the two other options that I, I figured were the two other most common designs, and I would try those out also. And which one are we standing next to? What's the name of this one? Uh, this is a Top Bar Hive, or a Kenyan Top Bar Hive, based on where it was. Uh, this exact design was invented. And it was from Kenya then? Uh, so it was a researcher in Kenya. I was working there at the time, and they were trying to design a hive that was inexpensive to build. Uh -huh. It could be made from local materials without fancy equipment. And so tell me how this works. So it's, it's basically a trough. It's a trough with sloped sides that come down toward the bottom. And the bees are going to build their own combs from these bars. Oh, wow. So you're going to dump in 10,000 bees like in this box, and they're going to start building combs just like this. And why is that so easy? I mean, what's good about this type of hive? Uh, good things about it are you, you don't need a lot of extra equipment. Uh, you don't need uh, a lot of extra tools and you don't have to lift heavy boxes. Yeah. So this one, the heaviest thing I have to lift is one of those combs, which wow. might weigh five to seven pounds, which is really convenient if you don't have a good back or if you're wheelchair bound yeah. or if you're just lazy like me, <laughs> uh, it works out really well. So I would think though that that would fill up quickly. Is that true? Do you have a lot of bees putting honey in there? It can, it is a fixed size, so the bees can fill up this whole box, but that is usually a good thing. That yeah. means you're going to be harvesting honey. So you'd go into the far end where the honey is, and you'd take out a comb. You'd pull out a comb just like this. It would be capped off. It would be full of honey. And then you can cut it into a bucket. You could cut it onto a plate and eat it just like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to do a lot of extra stuff to it. It's really ready to go. And what is it then that, like, for, for, for home owners that want to start bees, being in their yard more, what is it that they could do outside of the, the nest, clearly, in the hives? What can they do to really bring bees in more? Uh, you could plant flowers. Bees 
forage on flowers sure. for nectar and pollen. Those are really their food sources. So uh, if you have a lot of flowers, a diversity of flowers that are, that are bee-friendly flowers throughout your yard, uh, you've basically created a buffet for bees. And not just honeybees, but many of the native bees. There yeah. are thousands of native bees who do a lot of work and, don't, and go without notice. And clearly, in America at least, there's a lot of people interested in bees. You were just on Shark Tank, weren't you? Yes, I was. And how, how did that happen? I mean, how did you get that excitement going? And because it's really affected your business. Yeah, I, it started with an email to the producers of Shark Tank, and it was a long, year-long process. But, you know, they, they liked our story. They also liked the, the, the story of bees and yeah. how important bees are to our ecosystem. And so it was great that they were willing to show the millions of viewers of that TV show that bees are important. Yeah, they really are. And I'm, I'm going to assume you give classes and everything here, don't you? I mean, there's a lot of information people can garner when they come to bee thinking. Yeah, we teach classes. We sell all the other hive byproducts, so honey, wax. Uh, we sell mead, which is honey wine. So nice. we've got lots of stuff that's related to bees. So you don't have to keep bees, but you can come find something that came from the bees. Well, you know, I, I know for me personally, it's kind of intimidating because it's something new for me to try to raise bees. I wouldn't even know where to begin. However, now I have a place where I can can. So you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website. You can go there, find out the classes, come by to the store, see all the great stuff that's happening. Matt, this is really delightful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Peonies, bold and beautiful, an old favorite, but ever new, and perfect for your garden. At Adelman Peonies, you'll find hundreds of different peonies, bush, ito, and tree peonies covering 20 acres. Come stroll the display garden, then find a special plant or bouquet to take home. Join us any day of the week for beautiful color or weekends for special events. Adelman Peonies is just east of I-5 at exit 263 on Brook Lake Road or online at peonyparadise.com. Little Baja is your source for a whole lot of terracotta and concrete, too. From bird baths and benches to Buddhas, bears, and fountains, plus the exclusive Baja chimney, we have an amazing variety of the finest in terracotta and concrete containers. Come check out our selection of statuary for any garden theme or setting. So for something for the garden, deck, or patio, come see us at Little Baja on East Burnside in Portland. Find us on Facebook, too. Professionals have grown with DRAM watering tools for over 65 years. Discover the quality of DRAM. Nurture your plants with a shower of rain. Select from nine water patterns. Care for your lawn with quality that will last a lifetime. DRAM, the professional's choice for lawn and garden at a fine garden center near you. Hi, I'm Burl Mossel with Rare Plant Research. We're a nursery and garden. You're invited to join us the one week in the year that we're open to the public. You can tour our gardens and get inspiration for your own garden. We have 10 greenhouses full of rare and exotic plants. Enjoy lunch from a local caterer while tasting wine at the greenhouses. We will be sampling our wines from Villa Catalana Cellars in the Garden Conservatory Tasting Room. For directions and information, visit us at rareplantresearch.com. Join us and get inspired. Garden Time's Incredible Edibles! So I am in a really beautiful garden. I'm here with Sace Jung. How are you, Sace? Good, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Good. And we're going to be talking about bamboo because throughout your garden here at your home, you have some amazing bamboo stands and there's something that you do with them every spring. So what is that? Oh, well, I, you know, they kind of take over the yard, so I just pretty much Ideally, pick them when they're three to five inches. And what do you do with them then? Well, I would uh, peel them with a paring knife and then I would grill them, marinate them, grill them. Very simple stuff. Really? So, yeah. and that would be a, way, a great way to con control the bamboo, Definitely. isn't it? Definitely. <laughs> so <laughs> now, when you over. say that you, you pick them, is there a, first of all, I would think, is there a specific variety of bamboo that you grow that you eat or any of it? Uh, I usually prefer the more slender kind, like the ones we have right here, the Bissetti bamboo, and uh -huh. so they're slender and they're a little bit early in the spring, so it's very easy to uh, peel and grow them. So that's the kind you like, but you can actually do any of the bamboo at all around here? Definitely, any bamboo, uh-huh. Now, 
I'm sure there's a process of like how tall they have to be, how much you cut off. Show us what you do to get them. So what ideally you would want the bamboo to be three to five inches and uh -huh. you can just break right off oh, there. Oh, that so was easy. it's very easy to do. So that's what you do. And like over here, there's some taller ones. Would you still take those as well? Ideally three to five inches, but you can take them off. You just have to discard the lower part. Ideally, you still would want to use three to five inches of, of the bamboo. Yeah. So now what we're going to do with these is do some grilling on them, right? That's right. So let's walk over to the grill and Sounds start that up. Okay, thanks. Okay, Sace, now we're at the grill, but I'm assuming you don't just throw them on the grill like this. No, do you? you don't. So what do you do to, to You get actually ready? would get a paring knife. The best way to do is cut about three, two, two to three inches off the top here. Okay. You want to cut there and make a cut right from the top to the base of the shoot itself. Uh -huh. And then you want to just peel it off here. Oh, oh. So it's very simple. So you're really just peeling off the external leaf structure yes. of it. Yes, and the more tender leaves on the top, you can still use it about there. Okay. So that's fine, that's all you need to do. And then that. what's the next step? The next step I like to do is just do a simple grill. I would like to marinate it in uh, olive oil. Okay. And then we have salt and pepper here. Uh huh. And then we have some sesame oil to give it a little bit added flavor. Sure. And also, I like to add toasted or untoasted sesame seed oh. to give that even extra flavor. Okay. So what you would do is just put the bamboo in here. And, and this is all stuff that you've picked in your own yard. Isn't yes, it? definitely. Okay. These are the bisetti. These are actually the black bamboo uh -huh. itself. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So you want to just drizzle, get some extra olive oil, virgin olive oil. Drill, you drizzle it on. That's... And then you want to crush, uh, grind up some peppers mm -hmm. all the way through. Generous amount, I prefer that. It tastes a little bit, I think, better. And then just some ground black peppers. And then some olive oil. Is that olive oil? I'm sorry, this is actually <laughs> sesame oil. Is, you <laughs> so you're using sesame and olive oil both? Yes, okay. uh, you don't need a whole lot of sesame oil. It's kind of strong, okay. so a little bit goes a long way. And then you want to just sprinkle some sesame seed. As I mentioned, you can use toasted or untoasted okay. sesame seed. It doesn't matter. So you do that before any of the grilling starts? Yes. And, and then, then do you set it for a while or? No, you don't need to actually. It's very quick. You just kind of need to stir it up a little bit here. Okay. So it's all mixed up. And what do you have the grill set on? The grill is on medium. Okay. And then you want to do it about three minutes on each side. Of course, it depends. If you have a more slender bamboo, you can actually a little bit less than three minutes on each side. If it's a little bit thicker, it'll take a little bit longer. So you might want to check on Well, I'm so going to take this over grill. and let you put them on the grill All real right. quick. Sounds good. And then you just lay them now on also like you would. Like, when you lay it on, you want to put it across the opposite direction of the, the, the grill. Oh, because slender ones would fall through. It would they? fall right through. <laughs> so if you have the slender ones, you want to put some grilling basket underneath okay. it so it does not fall through. So All right, well, we're going to put okay. those on and then we'll let them cook and we'll be right back. Sounds good. So, Sace, we have been about three minutes now, yes, right? Yes, it's been three and minutes. And it's time to flip them. Uh-huh. And that's all you do is just turn them yep, over. Yeah, just turn them all one by one. They look like they're getting a little bit nice and brown. Yeah. Now, now as, as you do this and the rest of them continue to cook, um, you and your family have a great market on Weedler. Tell me about that and what we the name do. of it is. We do. It's on Weidler and Halsey side either way. Uh -huh. um, it's called Lily Market. And what, what does it have? We have, we specialize in Asian food, Thai food actually, Asian food, Thai, especially Thai, and we do retail, wholesale, and hot deli also. Well, so then I would expect that a lot of the stuff we used here and the flavors and things could be purchased there as well. Definitely. You can get anything from olive oil to sesame oil, so anything yeah. like that, yeah. And I also see that you have a couple of pieces of meat. What is the meat on the plate? There? Those are actually lemongrass honey pork. Oh, I okay. Made. It's a little bit spicy. It has a little bit of kick to it. And this is going to be served with that? Yes. It's a great uh, side dish, the bamboo shoot itself. It's a great substitution for asparagus. Oh, oh, so, okay. Yes. Well, yeah, it actually kind of looks like asparagus. Yes, it, it is like asparagus. It cooks probably twice as long as asparagus. But it's got a little bit crunchier flavor to uh -huh. it, taste to it. And when do I get to try one? Right now, I oh, guess. Yeah. <laughs> looks like it's ready here. It so does indeed. We'll plate it here real quick. Some of it. And then 
I like the more slender one. I think it's much crispier and uh -huh. has that barbecue grill. So, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use my finger. Yes. Hand me that one right there. Okay. All right. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's try this, Sally. <laughs> oh my. Is it good? And it has a barbecue. Oh my. That is really good. <laughs> yeah, it's one of my favorite things in the spring. Well, you know, this is a great recipe. And Sace has, has delighted me by cooking it for us today. So <laughs> you can go to gardentime.tv. We can click you over to their market. You can go in there and get some great food, some great things to make this yourself. And if you have bamboo, or even if your neighbors do, I bet they would let you cut some of this. Try barbecuing <laughs> it for yourself. Sace, delicious. Thank you so great. much for Thank sharing this with coming, us. Thank you for coming, William. You're Thanks. welcome. <laughs>
clay. Get all that down there. And then I'm just going to start stirring all this together. There you Can go. Can I help? Okay. And we're going to stir this for about five to ten minutes until the sugar completely dissolves. Okay, well now, it, it really happened quite quickly. The sugar is already dissolved along with the honey, so now we're going to add the lemons into this mixture. And the grain alcohol stays in the bowl. We don't want to add that yet, so we're just adding the lemons that have been sitting in the alcohol. So now here's the fun part. <laughs> Once the lemons are into the syrup, you just take a potato masher and you just start mashing them. You do this because you're getting just that last bit of great flavor from the lemons into the syrup. Once that is done, then you're gonna let the whole thing simmer for five to 10 minutes, and that'll really complete the process of it. So I think this is about done, I think Judy. so, William. So our next step then is we wanna strain out all the lemon rinds and the seeds from the lemons. So I'm gonna carefully pour this into this sieve. Now remember in the bottom of this bowl, is where all of the liquor from that we originally poured off is. That's a lot of lemons it and they is. smell it's a delicious. Lot of juice, isn't it? <laughs> okay. All right, and so we're gonna strain it. Oh, that smells really good, William. You did a great job. Thanks. All right, and so I'm gonna drain off all of the goodies of the lemoncello, and then William's gonna help me, and we are going to put it right in this jar and we're gonna strain it one Because that, yeah, that's really important because you can see a lot of the pulp is still in there. So we're carefully gonna pour it into a jar. Let's see how carefully I can do this. Ooh, there we great. go. And then once you have that almost full. There we go. You've gotten the last straining done. Then you take the lid, put back onto the jar. Now the great thing about this <laughs> is once you seal it up like that, it doesn't have to be tight. You put it in the fridge, you can drink limoncello that you made all summer long. Cheers. Thank you for watching today, and remember, we'll be here till 3 o'clock at Subaru Garden Days out at Capital Subaru out on the Parkway in Salem. So for more information on this great event and for more information on today's show, as always, we invite you to go to Gardentime.tv. Remember, we'll be here till 3 o'clock out at Subaru Garden Days. Nestled in the oaks of the Willamette Valley is a nursery that is truly exceptional. At Out in the Garden Nursery, you will find a vast array of shade plants, ornamental grasses, and hardy perennials. Let us help you bring color and texture into your garden. We offer over 100 types of perennials. Many of our plants are evergreen for year-round interest. Plus, we offer the best in personal attention. Out in the Garden Nursery, where we grow great gardens one plant at a time. Create this year's containers and baskets with black gold natural and organic potting soil. Don't trust your edibles and flowers with a potting soil labeled organic. Look for the OMRI listed logo on black gold natural and organic potting soil to be sure it truly is organic. Look for earthworm enriched black gold at your local garden center or go online to blackgold.bz. Black gold, all the riches of the earth. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.